Brace yourself, young psychomaniac, for this week's whole tone scale lick. So devastating it's guaranteed to make you say, Holy shit. <laughs> Salutation, sucker maniac, and welcome to another installment of Weekend Wank Shop here with your good pal, Uncle Ben. The only weekly lick lesson series guaranteed to cure restless lick syndrome among guitarists. I've had myself one extremely busy week between teaching a billion guitar lessons to sucker maniacs like yourself, as well as filming a new music video for my rock and roll fun time party band, Far Far Away's new single off of our upcoming EP which will be up soon. I'll keep you guys informed about that. I'm very excited about it. But I'm back again today to show you guys a devastating lick based on something a little different than our usual major scale or minor pentatonic ideas. This week's lick is based around the whole tone scale, which is something a little stranger than what you hear in your average Katy Perry song, but can yield some really cool results if you know how to use it. We're going to dig into a bunch of information about what a whole tone scale is and how you can use it, as well as the slightly irregular rhythmic timing of this lick. But first things first, let's hear this lick again at step Darwin speed. <laughs> Alright Suzanne, let's talk about the whole tone scale for a second, what it is and how it sounds the way that it do. The whole tone scale is a hexatonic scale. It means it's got six notes in it, okay? And every note in it is spaced apart from the last one by a whole step, meaning two frets for you guitar players out there. So in other words, if I start off on an A, like let's say fret five on the high E string, to play the uh, whole tone scale, all that I would do is just move up in whole steps. So two fret increments like this. Five, seven, nine, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21, 23, and then I'm out of frets after that. So every note in it is separated by a whole step away from the last one. This gives this scale a really unique sound. It doesn't really have a defined kind of tonal center. It just It's one of those sounds that seems to keep going and going and going. Unlike a major scale or something where you feel a real sense of resolution when you cross over the first note of it again. Feels like you just hit the finish line, you know? But with a whole tone scale, or any of the other symmetrical scales, it doesn't really have that feeling. It's just very restless, you know? It doesn't really seem to have a sense of resolution. So it's a really unique sound that you can add to your palette. The whole tone scale works really great against augmented chords, like this A augmented. It also works really well against dominant seven chords, like this A7, or the ultra expensive ultra dominant chords, like A7 sharp five or A7 flat five. Works really well with those. I find it's also perfect for any time you want to sound like you're entering into a dream sequence on a sitcom or something. very convenient for guitar players who like to play three note per string scales like Uncle Ben does because the way that it ends up looking on the fretboard is kind of like a checker pattern or you could also think of it as evens and odds fret number wise. So in other words if I started the scale pattern off on A and again I'm playing a seven string guitar today so just ignore my low B string here if you don't have one or low A as the case may be today. Starting off on my E string which would be your top string if you're playing a six string guitar. Any, anyway, if I play the odd numbers on that string, like 5, 7, and 9, A, B, and C sharp, then on the next string, I'm going to play even numbers. So I just have to shift up a fret like that, and now I'm going to play 6, 8, 10. Then on the next string, odd numbers, nine, uh, sorry, 7, 9, 11. On the next string, even numbers, 8, 10, 12. So in other words, it's always this odds, evens, odds, evens, and you can come up with all kinds of cool ideas. Based around that, it's pretty easy to see across the board. Now the only part that this gets a little sticky is whenever we cross from the G string to the B string. Because of the goofy tuning of the guitar, you gotta treat the B string a little bit different. You're gonna go even numbers on the G, 8, 10, 12, to even numbers on the B, 10, 12, 14. So in other words, unlike the other strings where I just moved a, a half step, I'm going to move up a whole step whenever I get to the B. Then when I get back to the high E, I'm back to odd numbers again, so 11 and 13 and 15.
Take a second to familiarize yourself with that scale pattern before you move on to the next parts, punk. As always, you bunch of hunks, you can find a full tab for this week's lick on my Instagram page. Search for me, Ben Eller Guitars, and you'll find a full handwritten tab for this week's lick. Don't forget to learn it, upload a video of yourself playing it, and hashtag that bitch weekend wank shop. That way Uncle Ben can check it out and see how you be doing. This lick is mostly all legato, much like how you'd see Joe Satriani or somebody like that play. Here's what's up, kids. It's going to start off on the low E string here on fret number five. Again, we're kind of thinking of this as sort of being based around an A augmented chord or something like that. So we're going to start this lick off on A on the root note of that chord. All we're going to do is, again, think odd numbers, even numbers, odd numbers, even numbers. It'll really help you out through this lick. So we're going to treat every string basically the same way. So once you learn this one pattern, you basically just apply it through every string. It's not too bad. Okay, we're going to start off on the low E string here, fret number five. I'm gonna pick that note, so this is an A note here, fret five. Hammer on seven, hammer on nine, pull off back to seven, pull off to five, walk back up, hammer on to seven, hammer on to nine. So I only picked the very first note, and the rest of that was all carried by hammer ons and pull offs. Five, seven, ooh, let's try that again. Five, seven, nine, seven, five, seven, nine. And then what I'm gonna do is just to move up a fret and go to the next string. Again, even numbers now. Six, eight, ten, eight, six, eight, ten. Go to the next string. Seven, nine, eleven, nine, seven, nine, eleven. G string now. Eight, ten, twelve, ten, eight, ten, twelve. Then we get to the bastard of the bunch, the B string, where I gotta move up a whole step. Again, I'll follow even numbers with uh, even numbers here. So I'm going to go 10, 12, 14, 12, 10, 12, 14. And then I'm going to reach the high E string here where I'm back to odd numbers. 11, 13, 15, 13, 11, 13, 15. And then I'm going to pick that note on 15 and slide it right up to 17 to A, which is right where we started, only several octaves higher. Okay, so again, here's how the lick will sound, starting from the 5 on the low E string. So mysterious. Now the rhythm of that thing is kind of weird, so let's break that down next. Oh! When it comes to my legato playing, I really like to rip off Joe Satriani as much as humanly possible. He was one of my first big influences on the guitar and still remains one of them to this day. And one thing that you'll notice about Satriani is whenever he does those big flowing legato runs, like what you hear in Flying in a Blue Dream or Time Machine, is that he's not very metrically even, but in a really cool way. It's in a way that just kind of produces this big, you know, smear of notes across a measure rather than a very evenly spaced, like, you know, 16th note kind of feel like that. Both are really cool. Tom Quayle does really excellent rhythmic legato kind of thing. Satriani and Greg Howe and other players do more of this smear, which I think is really cool too. So I incorporate a little bit of that into this lick to teach you guys some of that. Now with this lick, it's got seven notes spaced across every beat, which is kind of unusual. You're taking one beat and breaking it into seven equal parts. Uh, the way that I phrase this, though, it's pretty easy to get a hold of because every string has seven notes on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So as long as you make sure your pointer finger is on the next string, uh, whenever the next beat rolls around, you're good to go, you know? And so on like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The way that a lot of uh, actually, you know, Indian drummers and stuff like that, and tabla players, like to think about really irregular rhythms like this is to come up with a phrase or something like that that spaces itself out over a beat. Much like how a lot of us learn to go triple, triple, triple. They learn to use a phrase to space it across a beat. So in other words, if I have a metronome here set at about 40 BPM, I could come up with a phrase that uses seven syllables or seven words. Like, uh, I don't know, I am gonna have a beer, 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 only if you are over 21. Like that. That's a great way to understand some of these odd rhythmic groupings, is to come up with a phrase, say it over a beat, and then try to play that idea. So play around with any kind of seven 
word phrase over a metronome like that. You'll get an idea of how to play these sevens. There you go, kids. Another sick lick to add to the old wank bank. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars to keep up with my hijinks and shenanigans. Also, be sure to drop me an email, benellerguitars at gmail.com, and set up some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons here with your old Uncle Ben. We'll talk about rates and times and all that other good stuff and get you shredding like nobody's business in no time flat. Stay tuned for another sick lick next week. I'm going to get you chicks. Cheers, guys. Take it easy.